Hi, friends. Thank y'all for being here. Today, we are talking to Kate Dykes. Her husband is the head coach at TCU. So, I'd want y'all to welcome Kate. Hi, Kate. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. Long time no see, like for the summer. <laughs> I know exactly since May or June. I know, I know. Oh my goodness. So I'm I'm gonna jump right in here. I want to because I know pieces of your story, but I don't really know your story. I know the things that, you know, we've talked about here and there, but beyond Google, tell me. Right. You were a child of a coaching family. And so talk yeah. to me. I mean, tell me all about that. Okay, so my grandfather is was Joe Golding. And he coached at Wichita Falls High School and then was the athletic director. And he, for a time period, was one of the winningest coaches in Texas high school football. Okay, wow. Um, I know, which is awesome. I never got to meet him. He died before I was born, right before I was born. Um, then my dad went into coaching. And actually, we went back and coached at the same high school my grandfather coached and my dad grew up. So that's where I graduated. And my dad coached football. I have two brothers. And when they graduated, he switched to coaching girls to coach me. So then he was the girls coach for 15 years. Actually, maybe a little bit longer. Anyways, he's just retired. And then my oldest brother is the head coach at UTEP for basketball. He was at ACU for 10 years, and now he's at UTEP. And my middle brother, he's probably the one smart one. He is not in coaching. <laughs> and so he lives in Austin, doesn't do coaching, but everyone else, I feel like in my family has coached or done something with sports. That's awesome. That makes it so, really, you have a unique perspective as a coach's kid, knew, a coach's grandkid. I mean, that's a whole, that's, right. that's a whole thing. Whole thing. I agree. You, I knew what I was getting into. Yeah. You know. No no and whining so, and complaining from you, honey, because you knew. Heck no. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's right. So, okay. So then rocking along, Kate graduates high school, graduates college. Talk to me. Go to Texas Tech. And my, this is kind of a weird thing, but my parents and Sunny's parents knew each other okay. well just from coaching in Texas because Sunny's dad at one point was high school in Texas. Okay. And we lived in the same town when, but there's obviously an age gap with Sonny and I. So he and I never really crossed paths. I mean, we knew each other, but more just of each other. Right. When I was in college, we had the most awesome sports information guy at Texas Tech. His name was Chris Cook. He still works for the university, but in a different capacity. So I was just like a student worker through college doing that. And when I finished school, I ran into Sonny. And they were working football camps and we just kind of got started talking about what I wanted to do. And I was kind of picking his brain and we just started dating. I mean, it was, I was moving, had my first job. I don't think either one of us thought it was ever going to be a thing. And it just, I mean, literally from like that day forward, we just never didn't talk. And he was kind of a confirmed so bachelor. Yeah. None of his He was very happy with his free life. <laughs> yes. And all of his friends were single. And so I just, I don't know. I don't know if I ever thought it would really go there and it did. So that's awesome. Very grateful. Okay. So um, y'all got married. Where was he coaching? When Texas you... Tech. Okay. So he was at. Texas he and Dana Tech. Holgerson were co-coordinators for Leach. Okay. Okay. When Sunny and I got married. All right. And then we left and went to the university of Arizona Okay. Um, and worked for Mike Stoops, gotcha. who was so awesome. And we had the best, it was the most fun staff. We were all young, starting to build families. And we just had the best time. I'm still very close with everyone off that staff because it was just, it was my first move away from Texas, you know, kind of yeah. learning, figuring it out. New all bride. the things, yeah. Yeah. And we had our first child there, Allie. And so we were there for three years. And then when he got his first head coaching job from there at Louisiana Tech. Okay. Which was such an awesome stop. It's such a fabulous community. Really, it was such a, a God thing that that's where we landed for our first job because they just, it's just such a precious little community that 
But I think we were able to grow and learn. Um, and we had our second child there. Okay. And her name is Charlie. And she's 11. Then from there, we went to Cal Berkeley, which was like as opposite as you could get from Ruston. But we loved it. And we made great friends. I mean, it was definitely challenging. It was just different from maybe anywhere we had been before. But I... I loved it there. I mean, I did. It didn't end the way we wanted it. So I think it's kind of funny when, when I tell people we got fired and I loved it. But, you know. I understand I that. Know. I, feel like I you understand just, that. You, you grow a lot from those times. And we did a lot of cool things. Our kids got to experience a lot of awesome things that they would have never done had we not lived there. Right. And we decided to have our baby. So he was born in California. So our girls were eight and five when we had him. Oh my, you started over. Kind of. We basically started over. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. And everyone says, was it an accident? I'm like, no, we actually, I think we needed him Yeah. at that point. It was our last, he was three months old the day we got fired. And so so it was so a good distraction. Knew. <laughs> it was a nice distraction yeah. on a on a rough year. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. exactly yeah. right. And so then we left there, um, got fired in January, which was really late. Okay. So uh, I want to kind of camp there for just a second. Okay. Because yeah. this is the deal. You know, there's kind of that saying, and we're on the tail end of that whole emotional roller coaster, but that whole saying yeah. of, um, you know, there's two kinds of coaches, those that have been fired and those that are going to be fired. That's just kind mm -hmm. of a reality. And up to, you know, our point of we were at year 30, we had made it without being fired. And I think that was a real thing that mm -hmm. was another blow for us when it mm -hmm. happened. It was just one of those like, oh, we almost made it, but we didn't make it, you know, kind of thing. Right. And so there's a lot of emotion that goes into that. Kind of tell me how you walked through that part because that this is more directed towards coaches' wives and reality is there's a lot of them that deal with the yucky side of coaching. And yeah. It, and it has I, – the business side is not pretty and it's hard. No, it isn't. And it has lingering effects. I mean, I think – well, I'll, okay, so I think – I don't know if you were this way, but when you kind of have an inkling it might happen. Oh, yeah. You kind of start to feel – the anticipation of getting fired is worse than the firing. Absolutely. To me, the anxiousness, you're worried. I mean, every play, every game, that we, consumes you. It truly, we, we did that for about five years. Five yeah. of our eight. So I get it. It was like, it's you or it's Les Miles. And then Les Miles yeah. gets fired over one yeah. play at the end of the game. I mean, it is yeah. it is a whole thing. And that's a real that's a real feeling. Uh, I think in high school I didn't experience that from I mean, he had successful high school, but also because it has to go through school board system. They don't do a lot of in the that's middle. That's exactly year. right. That was an adjustment for me coming from high school it's 15 so, years to it could be yeah. in the middle of the season. You could play game it, 1 and then it's go over if they're not happy with you coming into the season. That's the reality. I, and, and really, I'll be honest, Christy, our, I felt like we were kind of on the hot seat our entire tenure, Cal. Which, you know, it's this is what I think is hard. And, and coaches' wives know this, but the outside person might not know this. So it becomes so hard because, you know, there's that fine line of like advocating for your husband. And then it's just, it just is what it is. The outside world might not understand all the goings on, if you want to say it that way. But so we had Sandy Barber was the athletic director who hired us at Cal. Amazing. And she and Sunny were like totally aligned on here's where we are. We know it's not great. Here's where we need to be. There was leadership at the university. Well, within our first year, both of those people were gone. Sandy was fired and the head of the university left. And so now you're not aligned because it's not who hired you. And so from that day forward, I always thought this is probably not going to end exactly how we want it to end. Um, you know, we had awesome players and to their credit, I think it was hard on them. Sure. I think 
they always knew that, but they bought in and they did the very best they could. And we actually had some good teams. It was hard. I think the anticipation of, is this going to happen? Our, you know, that did a bigger toll on us, or I should say for me, than it did him actually getting fired. I remember looking at Sunday. It was the Sunday morning in January. Yeah. Her coaching convention. And he was fine. He was having to hire a D coordinator. So we didn't go. And he said, I'm going to go meet with the athletic director over who we're going to hire. And I remember looking at him and I was like, do you think you're going to get fired today? And he said, no, Kate, it's January. I've just had three people in our home. We've interviewed them. I don't think I'm getting fired today. And it was weird. He left the house and I knew it. 20 minutes later, he called me and he said, you're not going to believe it. I just got fired. And that was a hard day. You know, I think too, you just hate it for your husband when you love them. Cause you think they've worked their whole life yeah. to get to a certain spot that that breaks your heart as their support system. So here's the funny story that as a coach's wife, you get it right. Yeah. I mean, when your kids say things, you go through stuff that if you told it to a random person, it's like, we don't believe it, but he gets fired. Thank the Lord. My mom was still in town. So she took Daniel for me and I had a dear friend that said, just drop the girls at my house so yeah. that I could just have a moment with Sonny to like process. process. Yeah. What do we do? You know? So we go to pick the girls back up from the friend's house later that evening. We're driving, you know, everything in the Bay area is really hilly. We're driving up this hill and Charlie's in the background, but she was five and she's going, Daddy, you got fired. F I R E D. Fired, fired, fired. <laughs> that is so odd because the, the purity time, of Daddy. all of that. <laughs> yes. And Sunny is driving, and he and I just start dying laughing because you're like, Yep. We I did. Guess we got fired. Yep. <laughs> That's right. And she was like, At least you're not on fire. We're like, Yep. I mean, there's a positive. Yeah, we're not on fire. We just got fired. So we're just so, so I mean, if awesome. you knew Charlie, you're like, of course it was Charlie who said that. So we always laugh. But we left. We were gone within a week. He got fired on a Sunday. We had a lake house, which was amazing. We had this refuge that we were like, we'll just go there. Yeah. And Sonny's dad lived in the same area. And he wasn't doing great health-wise. So we thought, we'll go there. And we'll just put the kids in school and we'll figure it out. Okay. And um, so Sonny left on Wednesday with one of his very best friends from when we were at Louisiana Tech. He flew out. They drove a car with a little U-Haul behind it with just stuff we had to have immediately and our dog. And they drove to Vegas and made a stop. Of course. With a U-Haul <laughs> and a dog, you know. And they did this little drive to Austin. And on the way, that's when Gary called Sonny and said, what would you think about coming to TCU and being an analyst? Yeah. And so that's how we ended at TCU. I will always be so grateful to Gary and Kelsey because we it gave us a spot to land. And Sonny, his ego was shot. Not an ego. I don't want to say that, but your pride. Your confidence right? Every, level. Some of the things, yeah. all the things for the minute. It's like you start to question, like, what could I have done differently? What, what could yeah. I have done better? Am I as good? Yeah. You all know, I don't know. the things. Yeah. And so it was such an awesome place. And I'm so grateful that Gary gave him the opportunity to be here because he got to be in football, but just got to decompress. Right. And we had struggled on defense a lot at Cal. And so it was really good for him to come and shadow Gary and, you know, watch from that perspective. And we ended up, I got a phone call one morning in when we were in Fort Worth in April and they said, Sonny's dad just had a massive heart attack. And so I had to call up to the school and we ended up losing him. But had we not, if we'd have been in Cal, Sonny would have never made it to his dad's house or to be with his dad at the hospital while he passed. And so, you know, all things work for a reason and the Lord's planning and his journey and his timing. And so 
it was such a blessing that we were here, right. that he could leave the office, get in a car, drive three hours, and be there with his brother and sister, which that would have never happened. I mean, it would have been an airplane ride and then a car ride, you know? Right. And so we got through that, spent the season here in Fort Worth, and then got the SMU job. Okay. Which, you know, they took a chance on us. It's hard sometimes to hire someone who's been fired. And sure. Absolutely. They did. And I I'm, yeah. will always be so grateful. That was one of the things that Terry asked us was, are you ready? Are you, are you yeah. in a good space mentally, emotionally? Yes. Are you there? Because I really feel like you're the guy for this job. And we were February 15th. I mean, it was not firing. We, that happened in December. So we had an eight week window. Yes. But getting hired here, it ha all happened so late because of the domino effect. But yes. that was a real conversation. And it had been a real conversation for Gus and I just that, did we even want to go back to coaching? I mean, maybe we've, yes. we've had our run and this has taken its toll, good, bad, and indifferent, you know, the good things, yeah. the bad things. But now we're at a space of, you know, we're, he was, he was mid fifties. I was just kind of edging into 50. I'm just saying. So, but he That's looking at it, like, <laughs> are we sure? And there were some opportunities that were more, you know, talking about instead of living it doing. and doing it. And so that was a real conversation. So kudos to him for having time to heal and losing his dad in the midst of that. And then yay for SMU giving you the shot because, wow, that was a because great if run. Not, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's hard. You know, you think I read some somewhere during the that year that we left Cal, like, some of the hardest things to go through are losing a parent, firing, having a newborn. And we had a newborn, got fired, and lost his dad all within six months. I just, I will always be so grateful to SMU because they took a chance on us. Sure. And um, it was an awesome four years. You know, right. I'm, I'm really proud of what we did there. Sure. Um, you know, I mean, it's like little things. It's really fun for me now. I see the Triple D logo that we did that was the City of Dallas with a Mustang in it. And that was the football creative stuff. And that's where it gets tricky because you leave a school like that to come to a rival 45 minutes away. It was the hardest thing I have ever done. And my kids. It was hard. And the one thing I, I don't like the way football has shifted is like, you know, firing coaches in the middle of the season. Because it just puts everyone, you know, it was unfortunate timing that all that was going on while we still had games to play, you know? And so, which happens now. I mean, that's just the nature of this business. And it is so hard to do if you care about people or if you have built relationships. You know, it, it's, it's just messy. It's so true. And one of the things that just comes back to me for our personal walk is I don't want to live offended in an offended life. I don't want to walk mm -hmm. around being mad. Yeah. I, the last seven months have been lots of ups and downs, but, um, you know, I think it's hard. It was hard on our kids, that departure, especially our oldest, she's 13 and, Someone wears a shirt to school that has your dad's face with traitor written across it. That's hard because it's just her dad. Yeah. You yeah. know? And, but at the end of the day, it's like I've told him, I'm like, listen, we're just going to wake up every day and try to do the very best we can. And your dad's going to make mistakes and I'm going to make mistakes. And I've had to make amends with people from things that I didn't do perfect or right, and you're going to have to do the same, and it's okay. And we're just going to wake up and try to do the very best we can. This right. is a complicated business. There's no clear answers, and we're just going to dig in as a little family and just, you know, try to do the best we can. That's well, what I always tell them. Be kind and do the best you can and love the Lord. One of the things, it was interesting, because when we left Auburn to go to Arkansas State, something that Jonna's mom said to me, and it was very interesting because we were leaving at the bowl game, and I was 
I had people. I loved, I loved the staff. I, Jonna and I were mm-hmm. like two peas in a pod. And mm-hmm. we truly, I had people that are still my people. Mm-hmm. And Mm -hmm. I was, I was weepy. I, you know, I was excited for Gus for the new adventure, but at the same time, I was sad leaving where we were leaving and we'd stayed on to catch Mm -hmm. the bowl. Well, Jonna's mom was sitting behind us at the game and, you know, she caught me kind of having a teary moment for just a minute of just realizing, you know, this is, it's your players. We'd been there for three years and it wasn't like a lifetime, but it was long enough Mm -hmm. To mm-hmm. feel connected. I mean, we had pulled in our kids. Three and three years in coaching. It's like a lifetime. A lifetime. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's like a lifetime. Yeah. And so it is a, a whole thing that, you know, all these pieces and everything swirling. But she looked at me and she said, you know what? Sometimes it's harder to be the one staying than the one going. And boy, did that come because I thought, you know, as people, there's that excitement of something new. Yeah. And sometimes it's kind of yep. okay to have a fresh start with yep. new people that are just excited mm-hmm. to see you. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, yeah, it's been a breath of fresh air in some ways to have people excited yeah. about, you know, seeing you. Like when we were at SMU, I think we thought, okay, you know what? This is, this is someplace we can stay for a long time. Right. And, It just all changed with the landscape of conferences. Sure. You know? Sure. And so it's hard because you're right. You have to be careful how you say it. Well, I just... And when when we... But but I think that we've always tried to be good about that, not make a promise. And then, you know, I think in retrospect, again, these are things that you learn and you make sure if you did something that you now think, gosh, I could, I shouldn't have done that. Or I should have done it better. This is a time to then regroup and say, okay, we'll do it this way this time or right. You know, whatever, right. but it's hard. It's just a complicated business and I'm so grateful to be in it. And Me too. yes, there's a lot of perks. I always say this to people. There's a lot of perks and we know that and we're grateful. But it's not always roses. Yeah. So, you know, on that note, let me ask you, what would you say the best thing? When our kids were little, we would do this thing when we would travel and best time, worst time. Gus's cousins we introduced us. We did the rose us. and thorn. Yeah. Yeah. So what was your, what is your best thing about coaching? I definitely think my rose, which is what we say in our house, sure. would just be being able you know, I love having the opportunity to be around young people because I think you and Gus get this. Not everyone does. Sometimes I think as a society, we sell young people short. They're really smart. They're very intuitive. And I like being around them because they keep you honest and they keep you, you know, your mind having open mind about different things and keep you growing and learning. Cause I, you know, you watch people as you get older, you kind of get more closed minded or you get more stagnant. And I just am so thankful that we get to be around young people that make us better. Sure. I mean, I feel like I'm a better parent because Absolutely. I'm around, Absolutely. you know, those young men and, and it always keeps my mind working of like, what can I do better, different? How do I approach my own kids? They're, you know, they're surrounded by a lot of young people from a lot of different backgrounds and different ways of life. And sure. that is so healthy. I think that's the greatest gift you can give your kids is for them to have open mind, open heart, open eyes to just be kind, considerate humans, you right. know? Right, right. Um, so your worst, your worst, your thorn, your worst part, you know, when you see your kids hurt, that's hard. You know, they have to learn some real life lessons experience. They experience things that are adult issues. Sometimes I had a, um, we had a coach on our staff. that's not Ole Miss and his wife was when all he played at a school we were coaching at and he had left to go to Ole Miss. And so when some things were transpiring that weren't super lovely, um, she called me and she said, listen, Randall always tells me when emotions are high, clarity is low. That's going to be my new 
tatted across. And I'm telling you, it is my like. So say motto. it one more time. When when emotions, emotions are, high, are high, clarity is low. That's intense. And it's Randall Joiner. He's at Ole Miss. He's a D line coach for uh, Kiffin, and he's awesome. And and you know they came by the house and loved on us and just kept saying that. And I literally would pray it when I went to bed. And when I woke up and that has been so helpful. It's just kind of been my motto of anything. I mean, to my teenage yeah, daughter. Yeah, that's, when that's she gets like into a, a thing, whole life lesson right there. Yeah. So are there any other pieces of advice that you would just, I mean, coming from your mom was a coach's wife, your grandmother yes. was a coach's wife. What do you have that maybe would apply to, because truly, I think there's pieces of this, of our lives that don't translate to high school, but there's a most of it that does it. it I agree with that it does. Look I agree with that. I agree. You know, I just think the biggest thing is, and, and the majority of friends we have in this business do it this way, but I just would say invest, invest in the people of the town, the players. It makes it harder when you leave or if they force you out or if you have, if you choose to leave, it makes it harder because you've built these relationships, but it's worth it. Right. I can't imagine doing it any other way where you don't really build relationships where you get to know people because that's what makes it worth it. I mean, you're in this business to help and shape and mold young people. And to really do that, you have to be as invested as you're asking them to be. Um, and so I think that goes to whether you're a junior high coach or a high school coach or a college coach or you know, whatever it might be, just invest and, and make the most of it because we're in this business to change young people's lives sure. and to make sure when they leave us that they're good husbands and good fathers and, you know, good employees and, and dependable. Some, and some come in with great foundations. Others don't. But the whole thing is you just want to, it's like anything in life. You want to leave it better than what you found. That's it. right. And that's what, exactly right. How it came in. So for sure. Yep. I think um, that's it. I think that's a great word. It's a great word. And I know for us it's been something that investing, we now have friends all over, you know, yes. because of that. And you find that even as the people who are not necessarily connected to your football because they're not in your staff or in your, you know, circle right. every day, you still make relationships that yes. go on for years and years of your life and you can connect back to hey you know and it's kind of fun to you know I for me it is I, I'm a people person and I love that no you know, I, 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 I actually agree I, I turned do. I had a big birthday last year and it was so fun because I had you know people who helped celebrate me from Arizona to Louisiana to the Bay Area to Fort Worth and Dallas and so you know you think it's worth that yeah because those are the people that make it the space of my life, you know. And For sure. So when we come to town next yes, year. we're going to hang out. Or the next. We are so hanging out. I promise. Yes, we are. Um, it is going to be fun. Uh, well, you're awesome. And listen, you are such a bright light as a coach's wife. I love and you. And I just appreciate that you do what, what you do and you, and you are who you are. And it means a lot to people. I'm a lot. Let you me. are correct. I am a lot. I so. love it. I'm a lot. I'm a lot.